YouTube is a huge place, but far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of YouTube is the world of watch channels. Consider this video your hitchhiker's guide. Normally I'm illuminating watches and watch history, but this time I'm illuminating watch YouTube more generally. Some guardrails for the video. Mentions don't equate to recommendations or endorsement. I'll generally keep things positive. Like all communities, things can get a bit spicy once you dig into things a little. There is a high likelihood of disagreement with my idiosyncratic way of categorising things. This can't be comprehensive and can only give you a flavour of things. And lastly, reviews is such an omnipresent aspect of the community. Apart from some exceptions, that I'll be focusing more on the secondary aspects that make the channels different. Our ultimate answer to the question of watch YouTube? Well, it's not 42, but 54 channels strap in. To the first frontier, and one of my favourite areas, is channels that use a significant dose of humour. In this area of the watchverse, we have the likes of The Time Teller, he didn't invent time, he just tells it, Jory enjoys a G-Shock all the way through to higher end options, as well as Salmon Dials, Cartier Tanks and Moon Phases, he's not averse to a wind-up, especially if you're a fan of Tudor. He's at his best when getting down to business, covering a broad range of watch options beyond the obvious, including the occasional vintage choice. Nico Leonard, I would put here too. Wow, did he ever make it mega big? Wow, bigger than the biggest thing ever! He's applying the lessons of more populist YouTube genres typified by the likes of the Sidemen and Reaction Channels with great success, but can be a bit divisive with dismissal of certain brands, Beware, Hublot and Grand Seiko fans, but at least he recognises the god tier. I'd also put Andrew Morgan from Watchfinder in here. Despite his reputation as the eloquent and sophisticated talking hands reviewing high-end hort horology, with his own content and podcast, he's deceptively devilish in the sense of humour. I found myself regrettably googling Blue Waffle after innocently watching one of his recent videos. Don't do it. Regardless, a real institution of the YouTube platform. Britt Pierce has experimented with all sorts of different styles of video, but my favourite is when she takes the more comedic sketch approach. The Ho Drinky series was great, and drunk DMing of other watch influencers made me laugh a lot. Got a little bit more opinion focused recently, so I do hope she keeps the banter. Russell, the mad watch collector, is well and truly a resident of this zone, bringing a solid dose of nostalgic dad humour to proceedings, with lots of Ultimate Warrior and Back to the Future references. A slice of positivity is great when the hobby sometimes gets a bit snobby. Three pints at lunchtime. Time is an illusion. Lunchtime doubly so. A final flavour of this more humorous corner of Watchdom I'll throw in is more subtle, which is the Your Terrific channel. Super professionally done, but he also throws in a few funny lines now and again that keep things light. Leaving the more humorous proceedings, we go to somewhere that can occasionally get a bit darker, which is at its best news and trends channels, but occasionally slightly less attractive drama-based content. Tell me, do you get on well with other robots? <laughs> One of the owners of this space is Tim Wright, who is a facilitator of exchanges around watch news and the latest occurring in the community. Lots of live streams and debate. Shout out for him braving the swatch craziness in live reporting mode. I'd also put Paul Thorpe in here, a great character who's an ex-dealer and often has coverage of these news-focused topics, especially when it relates to watch crime as well as trends within the industry. Close by and significantly overlapping are opinion-based channels. Now an out-and-out -out opinion channel is Pete McConville, who's interesting in his very marketing and watch industry lens. Stick it up your nose. Which is precisely the kind of thing we need to know. I mean, do people want fire that can be fitted nasally? And in addition to his love of Breitling and Alpina, he often focuses on less explored brands than the norm. A very different channel not short of firmly held opinions is Paul Pluter or his alter ego Archie Luxury. I perhaps missed his heyday, but have seen plenty of clips of Rolex being shouted very loudly and the flash of a Patek or two, until he sadly had a break in in his monster safe whilst away from his house recently. He has a seriously active group of fans despite his abuse of their watch collections, so don't worry, I won't be rude about the pontiff. Theo and Harris I'd also put around this domain who are often putting across takes on what they think will happen in the watch industry, and ditto for Federico Talks Watches. Strangely enough, my favourite video of his is one where he covered a range of rare Swatch watches. Again, closely orbiting in the same system is the more traditional journalistic style of content, growing out of publications, and typically linked to watch blogs and the like. Here I'd include Hodinkee, the John Mayer interviews are iconic, and a blog to watch. Floating around some of this is what I think of as more community-based channels. These folks who are much more of the basis of the watch community outside of the big guys are often live stream focused and are more about connecting in with other watch people and welcoming new entrants. Channels like this are very active in comments on other channels. Creators such as Watch Crunch, Somewhere in Time, and SoCal Watch Reviews I think typify this area. Adjacent to this cluster of channels are those that are more high horology focused, which is historically where you'd find the likes of Watchfinder before they evolved into the slightly more populist form, and Watch 
Cashbox with Tim Mosso. Those are the guys that really know their stuff. A slightly different slant is channels focusing on watches outside of the mainstream. At the luxury end of things, this is typified by Swiss Watch Gang, who are crushing it after recently passing 100,000 subscribers. I need to watch them more, but one of my personal favourites here is Caseback Watches. I will rarely know of any of the watches he features, so I always learn something new. The next two groups have substantial overlaps with each other and some of the previous categories, but I do think they're worth putting a ring around. First, the dealers. Teddy Baldassar is primarily here for me, super professional channel with a clear business element linked to the watch store, which is very nicely curated for the audience of the channel, which is more mid-range to entry-level luxury. His supply and demand video on Vabel and Goods is a gem of a video, as well as the MVMT documentary. The more affordable end of things is Long Island Watch. Mark seems like such a sound guy and super knowledgeable about watch with an engineering background. He does enjoy an obscure watch now and again too, and I'm thankful to him for learning about Yes watches, for example, and I'm very jealous of his watch storage solution. At the luxury end of the spectrum, we've got the likes of Roman Scharf, representing the grey market dealers, and the more eccentric Mark Gebauer. That guy's Instagram videos absolutely crack me up. Inevitably, there is a blur between these high-end luxury dealers and what I think of as more lifestyle-oriented channels. At the extreme end, we have producer Michael, a crazy rich guy with a passion for extravagant watches, dandy-esque fashion and massive mansions. I actually find him very authentic despite the extravagance, and occasionally enjoy a view of his videos to see how the other half live. Watch Eric and the Miami lifestyle with drone shots galore and what your watch says about you type of stuff is a similar aspirational lifestyle channel. Still in the lifestyle zone, I put Amsterdam vintage watch Watches. I loved the King of Vintage channel which was an offshoot of this. His interviews with serious high level watch collectors are crazy. In a different lane, and frankly his own lane entirely, is Oshin O'Malley. The shots of Venice and the life there, interspersed with watches and wine galore, is seductive. The best drink in existence is the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. The effect of which is like having your brain smashed out with a slice of lemon. But his larger project videos are absolutely awesome. The Interstellar video series is a truly special cinematic and audio experience and should be watched by anyone on YouTube. If you like the travel element, Time to Go Travel and Time Pieces uniquely combines those two topics. Talking of unique, the Urban Gentry channel I would also put here in lifestyle. His brand is genius and is such a unique concoction of nostalgic elements and the breadth and specificity of TGV's interests beyond watches like films, pop culture and fashion. The law track suits anyone? The curation of the brands he investigates and the setting of trends with the flighty, squale, fortis and others is impressive. After watching his videos you'll suddenly find yourself wanting a two-tone, 36 inch 80s watch worn by the mafia and you just won't know why. Onwards and upwards. Elizabeth Grant is another super nicely produced and edited channel. I've noticed weaving in broader lifestyle elements like her interest in boots. I'm so interested to know what the overlap is in the audience between those two topics. Finally, in lifestyle land, but potentially not a perfect fit for it, is Adrian Barker. A bit like Jenny L, who I also struggle to place as they do content of all different types. His videos have this professionally filmed, freshly ground coffee with your Rolex vibe that just fits with such a chunky segment of the watch community and what they aspire to be like. My favourite of his videos was the Explorer 2 history video. We're travelling a bit further away from the previous cluster of channels now to the next big planetary system, the substantial world of affordable watch channels. Now Jody, or Dr Jody as he is now, from One More Watch is the paradigm of this area. Lots of AliExpress, Loom Wars and Seiko quality control bashing. A super professional addition to this area is Ben's Watch Club, which is the very affordable end of the spectrum. One might even say cheap. Ben is super smart and knows what he's doing with making very compelling watch YouTube content for his target audience. My favourite of his was the great find of that Casio lineage watch. Really nice. His bravery in saying how it is is also commendable, integrity level 10, and most importantly, he has a small wrist like me. There is a healthy group of similar affordable watch channels like Wes's Watch Room, I Like Watches, and Relative Time. Channels like Average Joe Watch Reviews, The Town Watch, and one of my favourites, Watch Chris. That guy always picks things I like to review. If you like your reviews late at night, there's Killing Time with Norman. Another icon of the more affordable end of things is Random Rob, the affordable man's talking hands and a G-Shock Square enthusiast, although he has taken a bit of a liking to Rolex more recently. Watching him attempt to find all of the watches he has lying around for State of the Collection videos is a particular favourite of mine. A related zone that goes surprisingly deep is the Invicta Gang, people that get into that brand go hard. Simucom Watch Reviews is someone who reps that brand a lot, as well as things that are much closer to my heart and I want his Citizen Hyper Aqualand. Now we get to my part of the watch universe, which is actually very sparsely populated, I'm sure for good business reasons. First, Digital Watch YouTube. And by the way, Douglas Adams is great, but an absolute heretic when it comes to digital watches. 
Orbiting this at a distance of roughly 92 million miles is an utterly insignificant little blue-green planet whose ape-descended life forms are so amazingly primitive that they still think digital watches are a pretty neat idea. Burn. Outside of myself, the Illuminating Watches channel, nice to meet you. Another resident is Vintage Digital Watches. That guy is a genius at old digital watch repairs and finding fun obscurities. I do hope more people will join the community here. Also close to my heart and almost absent from YouTube is dedicated watch history YouTube channels. It's often an element of other videos and TGV always has a section on this, but more dedicated active content is more limited to the likes of Time's Ticking. We do need more people here. Also lightly populated is channels focused on the design of watches. Here you have the design atelier, greetings to Aruba. He is very unique in this densely populated space of watch tube. You could also put ID guy here who approaches watches very much from the lens of industrial design. The final specialist group of channels I'll mention are watch repair channels. Here you have the likes of Spencer Klein, so therapeutic to see him repairing a Seiko Willard, the naked watchmaker, and channels like My Retro Watches, who also likes the digital watch now and again. Phew. We've got back to home base from this tour of YouTube watchery. I absolutely know I've not been comprehensive here, so let me know if there are unexplored worlds I've missed or any outrageous absences. What are your favourite watch channels? If you're interested in my own stuff, best place to start is likely my History of Casio in 10 Minutes video, which is an information grenade that typifies my channel. Just click here and I'll see you there. So long and thanks for all the fish.